Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, September 30th, 2020, 2 p.m. this afternoon. Here in the main meeting room at the Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Meetings normally held at the Municipal Offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required, public participation provided in accordance with Governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MPL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television, FTAC, and the dial-in number is 312-626-6798. Or the New York number 929-205-6099, or the toll-free number 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 9116041580, and the passcode 570012. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have Kevin with us tonight, but uh, to talk about our um, superintendent, assistant superintendent jobs. But I, I'd just like to mention we had the senior center clinic today, and it was so exciting. Uh, we normally do less than 100, 70 to 80 people at our senior clinic, and we had 135 pre-registered. So. We were pretty excited. We were, thought we were getting pretty close to, uh, you know, 90% uh, or so probably pre-registered. And um, there was 251 done. We did 133 high dose. We actually ran out of high dose. So, Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, it was really wonderful, 251. And it was a little rough in the beginning because the weather, poor Kevin got phone calls from us and um, early in the morning, he was a good guy. Uh, Dave, the weather guy, was getting harassed by me uh, to find out if we could squeak by. And he said it was close and we did it. it the weather was good and we uh, had a couple close calls in the beginning. But um, the tents went up when we had some downpours and we had, didn't have as much wind so it was great. But it was wonderful. We had fabulous police department participation. They were wonderful. They kept everyone safe. Um, we had the EMS there checking everybody out. And um, our volunteers were just really competent and really friendly. So even though we have these masks on, social distancing, it still felt like a good community event. And I just want to thank everyone that participated. Whether you came, you helped us practice, and get back into shape as a volunteer group. But if you volunteered, I just want to say thank you. Um, and uh, we really, it was just wonderful to have people, good people turn up. So um, now we'll move on. Lisa's on the call, on the yes. call so let's uh, talk about marijuana bylaw. Marijuana bylaw. Great. Kevin, I'm sorry if you don't mind. No, okay. Great. He'd prefer a Crown Royal bylaw. <laughs> so, um, Lisa, so I'm turning it over to you. Go oh, ahead. Thank you. Um, so, Lisa, thank you for joining us today. Please uh, um, meet our town council and is helping us, um, uh, helping us kind of work with the planning board and the select board to kind of get our marijuana bylaw uh, revised so that we can have a public hearing and can we sit here and we'll pick? Need another speaker. And, um, Lisa, do you have a moment? Uh, I, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what we were trying to do. And Trevor, could you just talk a little bit louder? I don't, yeah. I don't I know. We'll be thinking the way. I don't, can you hear me, Lisa? We can. Oh, oh, oh good. Perfect. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to just kind of go over that and to see what you still had for questions and if there was anything that, um, you know, I, I kind of want. I had a question a, a bit about maybe doing three MOs. Um, but maybe we only need two, uh, the marijuana overlay district. Um, my thought process was, a, was an MO1, which would be retail only, 
an MO2 would be everything except uh, social, you know, uh, social consumption clubs. And then an MO3, I was thinking, would be cultivation and manufacturing only. But maybe we do that. I'm not very versed in zoning bylaws, uh, zoning laws, so I, I wasn't sure if, they, if we can get away with just two, that's fine. Um, so I, I could go up and share the board and, and kind of talk to you a bit about where I was thinking to do the MO3 district. Um, Let's, um, so let me, um, Ms. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, to, you, um, to the member, um, it is fine. You can have as many overlay districts as you want. So okay. you can control the uses within each district by the table of uses. So if, if the MO3, let's call it your um, cafe district, okay? If, if those right. are in a different, if those are in a different location than MO1 or MO2, or you wanna do it overlapping, that's fine. We just need to add it to the use table. So just, if, yeah. you, if you could just flip to page 11 of the red line. Uh, okay, let me, uh, let me do that, page 11. Which is the use table? Yeah, I see it, yep. Okay, so if you look, you have the MO1 and the MO2, right? And yeah. basically what you, you're controlling the use in those two districts by how, however you've decided to do it. So in the red line version, yep. the comments that I provided to you based upon our conversation, yep. Trevor, was that yep. marijuana cultivator, for example, is not allowed in the MO1, but it's allowed by right with a special permit review in the MO2. Now, yeah. If you, we don't have cafes on here as a use. And that was one of the questions that we had in the body of the text. If you, right. let's cafe was listed here. The question is, do, would you allow a cafe in any of the geographical areas that you have defined on the map or, no. okay. So then I would add another overlay district to it. Cause we, where you yeah, would, so we, we were thinking, you know, we just still were, were um, prohibiting cafes or, or, you know, social consumption areas. I was trying to define the difference between cultivation and manufacturing only, cultivation, manufacturing, and retail, and then retail only. Yeah. So, yeah, if we could, if we could do that in just two overlays, that's fine with me. I, I just not really familiar how to do it, so... Well, so, the big, um, so let, I think the meat of this, and, and I can go over some of the other um, provisions of this, but the meat of this provision is in the table of uses. Um, okay, along, good. Along with the, um, along with the map, right? So what okay. I've done yeah. in the table of uses, and, and we can go through it, is I've mm -hmm. said um, marijuana cultivator not in MO1, but by right with a special permit review in MO2. Marijuana, yeah. product, marijuana product manufacturer, not at all in MO1, but by right with a special permit, excuse me, with site plan review in MO2. Uh, marijuana. Right. Yep. Is that right? Okay. Marijuana, I, I so. yeah. marijuana retailer is allowed by special permit, which is in the district, in the uh, bylaw also includes site plan review, is allowed yeah. in MO1 by site, by special permit. It is not allowed yeah. in MO. And we do see, and we do want, I think, retailer available, because the MO2 district is really the, you know, just based on what we have today is, is the MO2 district does allow retail, and that's our only spot. Um, I'm gonna, can I share the screen to just get a bigger view of this map? It's hard to see on a small page. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, Lisa, can you just go over why Trevor is pointing to that again? So, cause it's a little, I think I, I wanna make sure people are following it. Sure. You mean to go over those things that I just talked about? Yeah, no, just as Trevor points to, to MO1, he's going to, and then I just want you to just repeat 
Okay. So everyone can follow it. Okay. Yeah. So just to repeat, retail is special permit uh, and site plan review. That you know, just repeat all that. Stuff. Yep. Yep. So I'll wait till the plan comes up. So while he's doing that, um, and again, the board can can change this, um, how it was originally talked about by uh, in the body of this was that all of the all of the uses that are allowed would be allowed only by special permit with site plan review. And Trevor indicated to me that he um, was interested in allowing certain uses to be allowed by right subject only to site plan review. And so um, those are the some of the changes that I've made so that wherever a use is allowed, it's either going to be allowed by a special permit with site plan review from the planning board, or it's going to be allowed by right with site plan review from the planning board. So there will always be somebody looking at some aspect of this um, in order to open up. Trevor, what the heck are you doing? I'm trying to get back to oh, okay. No, I'm just impressed you keep hitting buttons. Uh, I need um Do you need me to go out there? Can I get your help? I'm trying to remember which one. Uh, yeah, I'll come out. Which one was our, um, which one was our web? You know, I can't go through the browser, but where was the other? Was it search? I'm so impressed that they're doing that. Um, yeah. I can't. Okay, yep. Okay. So, um, looking here, we've got ammo cube down on the bottom. Um, it, it has 
that's our retail and cultivation, uh, along with this demo too down here, is our retail cultivation and manufacturing, what, what, which we have now. So I was trying to get, I was trying to keep that and include marijuana uh, cultivation, manufacturing, and retail in the MO2 district up here, which is new. And then kind of in another area, I wanted to have manufacturing cultivation only. Could you put the draw factor on because she can't see your finger. Uh, yeah, I can't see what you're pointing at, Trevor. Put it in the draw mode. Hang on, uh, one sec. Um, I don't think I have a draw mode on that. No. Um, yeah. Do you want me to come back out? Yeah. We're almost there. Oh, God, this is painful. It's Trevor, you're doing well. Used to be here. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, all right. Oh, hang on. Here we go. There you go. Uh, um, I'm going to be an eight by next time. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so. Go you, slow, Trevor, so people can understand. Yes, I will. So, this spot up here, if you can see, on the north end of town. Is an MO2 district, which would be new, and there would be cultivation and manufacturing only there. Then down I, in this district, Trevor, it's not updating I, on the screen. I have no You're idea. Not, I, I can't. The rest. Okay. So yeah, me, but Trevor, put it on. Keep it for our people that are watching. Can you hit the share button? I, I am sharing it now. I think right. Yeah. Um. So. Um, Trevor, is that MO2 or MO3? The MO3 so we only right now in everything have an MO1 and an MO2. And MO2 is, is in the north red section on the very north right hand corner of the of the RA district map at P2. Yeah. And then uh, MO2 is everything in purple down here on the bottom and purple down here on the bottom. Okay. Um, all right. So, so, so can, Trevor, hang on one second, just to clarify for all of us who are not there the mo1 is the red outline and the mo2 is is the purple uh yes and and, and the mo2 right now is also the industrial park which is pi down on the very bottom it's outlined in yellow so i think on this map everything in yellow is an mo2 and everything in red is an mo1 So to, okay, so now now to clarify, everything in uh, yellow is M O two, and everything outlined in red is M O one. Yes. Yes. And so and 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 so I was trying to allow for manufacturing and cultivation only, and in another section of town, because right now our RA district allows manufacturing in the whole area. And we wanted to kind of swim that down and just do a small section, um, kind of where we have a current plant and maybe around that a bit where we have a plant right now, because if we're getting rid of cultivation in the whole RA district, we did still want to include it in the spot we have it and maybe uh, some parcels around that. So I didn't know if it made sense to do an MO3 where it was only cultivation and, and manufacturing. Um, and in that case, the very top of the map, the C2 MO2, way up at the top right hand corner where East Deerfield is, we probably wouldn't do retail up there. That would be an MO3, cultivation, manufacturing, but not retail. Um, you know, it's just nobody to overlook anything. It's way on the outside of town. Um, it doesn't really make sense. That no, it's too far away from our police. Yeah, you're not getting any, any economic development from it. I think the economic development would be in our corridor here, which would allow retail only in the red spot, um, and then MO2 in the current purple, and then MO3 would be a new section kind of up where old plant is. And I don't know if that, if that simple
simple enough to make sense or we we do it by the other table by limiting access or something like that too. So here's here's what would be helpful to me. From a zoning perspective, a zoning bylaw perspective, where you have it, it doesn't matter. You need to identify from a policy point of view, geographically, where you want what. And if you tell me exactly where you want what, I can put it in the zoning table to say that it's, you know, by right with site plan review or by special permit or whatever it is. So if you want, right, so if you do three, you know, circles that are MO3s and you only want cultivation there, tell me that and I can draft that in the zoning table. Okay. Right that, now, that's right now in your MO2, which is yellow, everything that's in yellow, you allow everything by site plan review, by right, by, with site plan review, except retail. And that's not allowed at all. Right, but and that doesn't make it right. In, in MO1, you allow retail by special permit with site plan review, but nothing else. Right. Yep. So, Lisa, is there, there going to be any concern because we're restricting? I mean, because the RA district is our whole town practically. Yep. So, is there going to be any concern that we're restricting it too much because we had voted that originally? No, because you're voting it. I mean, this. You, you're make it, this is a new change, so you can okay. you can change it to whatever you want to change it to. Okay. Well, I mean, originally, you know, five or six years ago, it it didn't it seemed okay, but now we want to restrict it to more, and open it up to more in smaller locations. So that That's transition fine. shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Yeah, so the only so just so you know, you know, if um. If somebody hasn't started the use in that RA district, has not started the use, and you uh, remove their right to start the use in that area, that's fine. It no longer is a legal use. But if they have started the use and you decide to make it not there in the future, they're pre existing non conforming, right? I don't think that's your intention, but you no. can you can restrict it to whatever area you want, and okay. it is what it is today. I just wanted to make sure we weren't you know that we weren't going to be on the hook because we're restricting it so much. We don't have a, we don't have any HCAs with anybody in the area that you're going to take it away from, right? No, no. the only one we have an H, uh, HCA is. Um, it's down in the bottom purple in yellow there. Uh, that we have something set up for already. And then we have one up, up in one of the RA districts, up by Lopping Field there, uh, Lopping and by the bars. Um, we have one cultivation plant. We would like to create a zone around that of manufacturing and cultivation only um, so that we're not leaving that one plant just kind of out there. Um, and then remove remove the rest of the right any other any other place in the RA district, and then allow in this larger purple area in the middle allow retail manufacturing cultivation, and then just in the red allow retail only in the red sections. Um, okay, so in the purple section, you would allow everything, including retail. Yep. Can you see that? On that, the that that showed up on the screen. It did. Okay. So that's the district we'd like in MO3. Uh, I guess that didn't work. <laughs> uh, that would be an MO3 where I where I wrote. And then um, I don't know how to back off of that, but um, And then this section up here would be an MO3. On the pre-existing commercial district, mm -hmm. commercial two district. 
So your MO3 would allow everything um, by right with site plan review or by special permit, or is there a different? I, I would say, um, can you may have to help me a little bit with the definition on both of those, but I think we would allow it, you know, kind of by right in those areas. I think they're appropriate for cultivation and manufacturing, but we want, obviously, the planning board to overlook, you know, does it have a uh, Correct security and, and all of that kind of review. Okay, so site plan review only, but um, including retail? No, no. It's it's manufacturing and cultivation only. Manufacturing and cultivation only in the MO3 district. Well, that, so hang on a minute. In the MO2 district, you have manufacturing and cultivation. Yes. So why do we why do we have a a new district where you're only going to allow manufacturing and cultivation? Well, because, um, because retail is also available in the MO2 district. No, we we're said not doing it's not allowed. Uh, no, we need it in the MO2 district. That, okay. That's the whole idea. That so we MO2, have two. The purple and yellow would be. MO2 retail manufacturing and, and cultivation. MO1 is retail only, which is in red. And now orange, which would be MO3, would be just cultivation, just manufacturing. Okay, so and MO1 is retail only, correct? Uh, yeah. Correct. Okay, and even in MO2, do you want the retail to be by special permit with site plan review or only site plan review? Um, I would think, I mean, you may need to help me on this chair with us. I, mean, I think we just want site plan review because location. We, we will have a host agreement. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think we need to have a special permit. Okay. So you have just, just for clarification purposes, no marijuana facility of any kind can come into the town without a host community agreement. Correct. Right, but I feel like we don't need to go through the special permitting process because we do have the host agreement where we would be checking all the boxes. Okay. So we want site plan review on all cases. Okay. And what about in the MO1? Right now you have retail with a special permit site plan review. Yes. Yes, because that's our downtown. And that's, okay. That's, that's and there, and we want we want the extra layer of protection because you know it has so much impact. Yep. Okay. It has so much potential impact. All right. So I've got it. And we want to make sure that there's no cafes that that area. Yes. We absolutely want to make sure we're ironclad, no social consumption. Anywhere. Anywhere. No, we don't want it. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to add a column MO3 in which only uh, cultivation, manufacturing, and the things that go along with that, all right? So independent testing laboratory, marijuana micro business, marijuana research facility, marijuana transporter, are they going to all be allowed to review an MO3? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. MO2, I'm going to have um, everything's allowed except for cafes, not allowed anywhere, but um, including retail. MO2 is everything is allowed, including retail by site plan review. And in MO1, the only thing that's allowed is retail and it's by special permit with site plan review. Correct. Okay. I think that's really positive, right? No, I'm hoping yeah. the planning board kind of goes along with that, but this is the select board kind of wish. We have a meeting with them on Thursday to just kind okay. of tomorrow, I guess, to, to just go over this and get their blessing, see if they're on board with this, if they have any changes. All right, well, I, I will try to get this, um, a new draft out to you. Um, okay, so th that's, the, that's the biggest issue, but can we go back to a couple of the uh, yeah. other yeah. items? Can I say something? Well, I'm thinking at least uh, the, uh, there's not going to be a confusion between retail and wholesale, right? No, they're, de they're defined. Okay, because, you know, basically that's what they're doing is we're 
everybody's going to be, a lot of people are going to do wholesale, where they're doing the cultivation and everything yeah. else. Right, of course, but, but that's, not, it's defined. Okay, I just want to make sure. Who am I speaking? Who's speaking? Yeah, they're defined. Who is speaking? Dave. That was Dave. I got my, the phone, the phone is too close to my computer, so I get back feed. Oh, I got it, I got it. I'm like, wait, wait, you're on mute, but you're speaking, I don't understand. Okay, David, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was confused. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, so yes, yeah. so marijuana retailer. I home, I get a lot of yeah. back feed. <laughs> yeah, okay, marijuana retailer is um, definitely defined. And of course the cultivation, they cultivate it and then they take it off and sell it to the retailer. So yes, it's all defined yeah. by statute. And those definitions. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that yep. somebody didn't try to backdoor a different way and shut us down. Yep. No, that's good. Can I um, can I ask make a comment? Ask a question. Sort of. Sure. Um, Carolyn and Trevor and David, we do not have confirmation the planning board will meet with you at five o'clock tomorrow. However, they have a meeting on Monday at seven. So, my suggestion is that the select board meet with them at Monday, it's on Monday at seven to discuss we, marijuana. We did have John saying yes, but right, we don't have a forum yet, correct, for tomorrow. Right, but they had a planned meeting for Monday. Right, will that give us enough time to get the stuff in though? I mean, so we'd have to do it on what the 20th would have to be our hearing then. That's the problem, I don't think we have enough time because this is a substantive change. So it needs so to be re-noticed. That's what right. we were trying to do, but we don't have quorum. We're, we don't know yet, right? We're trying to work on that today. We don't know we and nobody's have... responded to us except John. Okay, well, what we're gonna do is we'll call people. We'll call people. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, okay, so you want to go through the uh, document? Yes, yes, that'd be great. Okay, the, the, some of the stuff I made is just got, it, it's stylistic, but it's consistency. So we have this thing called adult use marijuana establishments. Well, there is no such thing as adult use marijuana establishments. They're just the marijuana establishments. That's what they're defined as. So. Um, all marijuana is adult use, right? So it's marijuana establishment. So I, I made those big routes. Um, yep. The wait, other thing, uh, wait, Jen, you have a question? Jen. Yeah, so uh, Sue has been trying to get the planning board to meet tomorrow, and it's been an unsuccessful. We have tried phone, we've tried email, we've tried every which way. I actually sent an email to John asking him to call me. Haven't heard from him. John said, John said yes to me, uh, but I just don't know about the other. No, that's the whole thing. We've been trying to get everybody to respond to us, and it's hard enough. We were trying to get the 15th for the remand. Um, we also tried to see if, if, if they wanted to still keep their meeting on the 5th, and the select board can then go to their meeting on the 5th. And we also tried to see if they would come on the 1st. So we're not getting responses. I had one response for from the uh, planning board for the first. Okay, then we need to push off the town meeting because this is really important. I know, I know. There are other things on the town meeting warrant that are also, I think, important. And but. Well, what do we need? Another two weeks? I mean. It, we need the time for the posting, right? That's the one that's holding us up. Right. You have to go through the entire hearing process. And that is a planning board hearing process. Yep, it is. It's and up to them. the thing that everyone needs to remember is if it gets too cold, we can't have a meeting outside. Well, June was kind of chilly. <laughs> I'm teasing. I know. I know it what was. I know what you're saying. Yep. No, it wasn't chilly. It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, one thing at a time. Let's try to All get... All right. Let's go through the rest of this, right? Let's go through the rest of this while Lisa's on the phone, and then we'll 
sort out our schedule. Yep. Okay, so some of this was just clear, cleaning it up and also making it consistent with the rest of the bylaw and making it in a form that would be acceptable for town meeting. Um, yep. so if you go to um, page four. Yep. So here's um, uh, this question I had for you under section 4664 and you all have um, answered this um, yep. related to social consumption. So um, make that clear that there's no social consumption, no cafes. Right, right. thank you. Um, so then 465 is really where this is all regulated. Um, and I wanted to okay. make that. So use is permitted and regulated. And I took out by special permit because you also um, are gonna do some of these with uh, just with site clean review. So yep. um, in A, um, we just made it clear that the land and buildings in Deerfield may be used here under only in accordance with section 2200 of the table of uses, right? So the table of uses says what's required, a special permit or a site plan review mm -hmm. with special permit or, you know, nothing. So I just refer everybody to that. Uh, yeah. And then I make it clear that the planning board is a special permit granting authority, right? Correct. Right. Yep. Uh, and then I'm going to have to change B because now we're going to have three overlay districts, right? Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then otherwise marijuana uses shall be prohibited elsewhere. In town. Yep. Okay, they're only going to be allowed in the overlay district. That's right. Okay. So then I make, in, and then I have to renumber these. Um, yep. Then in what's going to become D, I say, all uses requiring a special permit will also be subject to site plan review. And they have to meet yep. the site review criteria in the general section of the bylaw, which is 5300. And then right. all uses which are allowed by right shall also be subject to site plan review in accordance with the site plan review standards in 5400. Okay? Okay, yep. All right, so then if you go to the next page, um, this drafting okay. issue. Um, is this so page five? You have your. Uh, it's on page five. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, um, let so from a drafting point of view, in your bylaw, you have general special permit criteria. Okay, talks about setbacks, design, visibility, traffic, all that stuff, right? But then you have specific yep. criteria related to marijuana use. You don't have to repeat mm -hmm. the stuff that's in 5300 here. You just have to say, which we already have, that they're subject to the general special permit criteria in 5300. And they also can consider odor control, security of hours of operation, and consistency with nearby and abutting land and uses. And they're allowed to reasonably condition the special permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's just cleaning stuff up because there's an overlap and it was repetitive. Yeah, thank you. So if you go down to section 4666A3, and again, I'm just, yeah. you know, whenever you use a defined term, it should be capitalized. Um, so there was a provision that said, uh, no marijuana retailer shall be located on a parcel in which is 2,000 feet measured from a straight line to the nearest property line um, of where a parcel occupied by another mar uh, marijuana retailer is located. So Trevor, you want that to change to 300, right? And you want it building to yes, building? Please. Okay. I think so, if that's, if that's uh, acceptable and allowable, we, we talked about building to building because I think the planning board already gave somebody an exception and, it, and they used building by building. I'm fine with I, it, you're permitted to do that. Okay. Yep. okay. Do you have a question, Carolyn? No, I was just going to say it was originally, you know, uh, how you're interpreting it and how the new bylaws, you know, are current. It seems like most of the state or a lot of people are using the building to building because it's less mm -hmm. confusing. Right. Um, yeah. Now park, versus before. Parcel may be huge. Right. right. Okay. You're, you're That's good. That. Yep. Thank you. Um, and then uh, all I did in the next several sections is correct uh, 
you know, make it consistent with the defined terms. Yep. And then we go over to page seven. Yep. Um, where there was a section called the plan board may impose restrictions and conditions, time, place, manner. Um, that's yep. all repetitive. That's all repetitive with the provisions we just reviewed. So I just took okay, that good. out because it doesn't yep. belong here and it's repetitive. That's good. And, yep. and they're also permitted under their general section 5300 to have that. Okay. Um, so then I just use the defined terms again. Um, and then if you go to page eight. Yep. Again, this is um, cleaning it up. So we have two different kinds of permits now, right? We have special permits and site plan approval. Um, so yep. I say any permits issued uh, here under, not just those particular ones. And that's yep. basically I just cleaned that up one to four. Um, and then in subparagraph four under Roman numeral four, um, if there is a change of ownership of the marijuana establishment, um, then it requires them to come back in front of the planning board um, to have that reviewed. Okay. I, I thought we had that already. We didn't have that already? Well, maybe in the original, but this is the planning board vehicle. Oh. So, it, oh. you know, I'm not sure if it's currently in there or not, but. Oh, yeah. But yeah, okay. so that makes sense. All right. Yep. Yeah, we definitely want that. Yep. I just thought we had that ability already. Yeah, and we sense. might in our original. Yeah. Right, but you're okay. changing it all together now, right? So, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lisa, yes. Can you change building inspector to building commissioner? I can. That's how we. That's how we're defining it right now. Yep. Oh yeah. Good catch. Good catch, Casey. I mean, I can do it if you want to send it to me. No, no. I'm gonna. I'll just try to do it all together. Okay. Okay. Under subsection six. Um, I have to tell you, I don't really understand this. Um, okay. So typically if you build something on a public property, right? Or you're building a subdivision, uh, you want somebody to put up a bond so that yeah. the municipality can remove it from their public property if it gets abandoned, right? Or you want to assure yeah. construction is done on public facilities yeah. in a manner required under the permit. This is all private. So the question is, I think they, they're bringing this out. Maybe, well, we're doing this with our with our uh, solar and we require the solar fields to have like a bond so that, you know, when they decommission or everybody's gone and it's defunct, we're not stuck trying to clean it up. And that's not a private piece of land. Well, um, right? No, the one that's on is for the dump. Well, the, I thought it was on the one at Set Right I, Road. Yeah, I think we did put one on Set Right Road. So what they did is copy the one from the dump for Set Right and forgot think, to take that out. I think so. What? Well, oh, tell, sure. me what about, tell me. Um, so I, I, I think I know what the difference is, but you all tell me. What about a marijuana establishment, which would be a retail facility, a cultivator, or a manufacturing facility? What about them if they are abandoned? What are you going to do? I don't really see any reason to have this in there. I, I'm not I, sure. I, you know, it's different. I, if it's a solar field, you've got this stuff laying out there, but a building right. is a building. This right. is all. I think, I think they were worried. I, I think they were worried about abandoned greenhouses or something. Yeah, either abandoned greenhouses or, um, you know, the plasticky, you know, not not really well constructed or these ugly ugly big giant like butler kind of bit yeah but the butler building is a building you're not going to have somebody yeah. remove a building i think it's a, I, I agree it should be removed um i i would like i would like us to remove it i think it's you cannot restrict i mean you can't ask people to do that i don't think i mean well, otherwise I mean, you know if i been been some other organization right what if I what if I, mean, I am uh, ABC Vegetable Company? Right. And I, I and that's I, what I mean. I right, twelve acres of greenhouses. You oh, gonna make me do this? Yeah, no, we aren't. So let's get rid of it. Okay. We, I think we have to eliminate it because you can't. 
Otherwise, you would be doing this. That's why I had the question mark help. I didn't understand it yeah. either. The only time that should be in there is if that's on the municipal property. Yeah. yeah. And the, so here's know, the problem with that. Obviously, they want it in there, but I don't know that they understand or have heard Lisa's comment that you shouldn't be making a distinction that you wouldn't make for another business. Right, Lisa? Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that, I don't that, understand. Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out why, uh, what the harm to the town is, really. And I, I think you would have, I think you'd be hard pressed to enforce it, quite frankly. Right. Yeah, I do too. I think you've gone over, I just, you can't do it. Yep. I'm sure you can't. Because you can't do it like I you're doing were like in general. Or? Worried that like somebody goes defunct and all the weeds kind of left there, you know. And how do we get rid of it? Well, you know the plastic flapping in the wind. And or the yeah, because they're talking about plants and material and paraphernalia to to grow the stuff. But you know maybe they're worried because it's you know it's somewhat of an illegal substance. Would that be, would the plants be left over? Well, there's going to be those are controlled by the under the licenses they have control over all of that yeah so they'll they'll come and make sure it's all gone if they're i think you all have them. a conversation with the planning board to understand what their concerns are here okay yep yep yeah. um under the application requirements um i i struck that the planning board got to take and determine uh which ones they wanted to come forward first um, as opposed to in the order in which they are filed. So, um, that, I mean, it seems to me that if I, in my first in, I should have mine considered first. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I don't know why they would want to. Yeah, I mean, um, and, then, and then the rest of the, and then the rest of that section is essentially it's the planning board's discretion, right? If they're applying the special permit criteria and it doesn't meet the criteria, they don't have to approve it. You don't need to repeat that. Right. It's inherent in their powers. So yeah, if it doesn't meet it. They just put another meeting in the, in the, the right. next, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I agree with that. Right. So that's why I remove that, uh, and then I just clean up the defined terms um, yeah. and uh, the findings. I didn't have a problem with any of the findings. Those are all very typical findings. Um, yeah. So those are fine. And the other um, on then on page 11, we talked about the table already, which um, I will now, um, I'll revise all this based upon our conversation. Yep. Okay. Can I ask a question? Please. Sure. Um, so, Carolyn, you mentioned we wouldn't need a special per and I'm backtracking because some of it was a little confusing in the table with reference to the table, Lisa. Yeah, Why yeah, wouldn't yeah, you yeah. want a special permit with the host agreement? Because doesn't that help uh, refine the conditions under how this place operates? I, I, wanna, I, I want our host agreement to be as comprehensive as the special permit would, would have been. But I think you do need, when you are, the extra layer is, you know, it's more impactful downtown. So that extra layer makes sense downtown because you want to make sure another loop, you know, another hoop is being jumped through. But I think it, the host agreement for the other um, zoning areas is, is going to be sufficient because we are going to make sure that we, we, you know, we hit on top of all those issues. So Lisa, is that allowable under the, the regulations themselves? Can you make a, that host? I didn't think you could build your host agreement out that, ex that comprehensively. Am I wrong? Well, the I host, think you can. The host community agreements that you have are pretty comprehensive already, right? They talk about security, yeah. right. talk about yeah. traffic and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't, you know, I think that between the host community agreement and the site plan review, you're probably covered. Um, but I think it, I think Carolyn's right that the special permit in the more dense section of town for retail is mm -hmm. probably appropriate. Okay. Okay. That's just what and I, I just needed to clarify that for myself because so, I wasn't and sure. For me, if, if the planning board needed to do, like, I'm not going to fall on a sword or anything. If the planning board needed a 
needed a special permit for the cultivation facility. I, I, I mean, I, I'm willing to give on that, but I just, it's already, you know, laid out in the design and it's yeah, in I mean, the it's, section that we yeah. want it to be. I, you know, I don't really see a need for it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not that opposed to it. But, I, I, you know. I just think it's it's one more hurdle that is, I mean, it's, it's a duplicate kind of thing and they don't really need it for the other two districts, but I do want to make sure the downtown, we have as many eyes as possible and we do have as many hoops because it's not like we really want to encourage it all that much. Mm. I mean, it's it's really, we want the best the high end somebody, if they're going to come, then this is what they got to do. I mean, we want the best anyway, but... Does that I, make sense or, is it, or yeah, would you recommend just, anything different? Either Casey or, or Lisa? Uh, this is totally a local issue, however you feel comfortable doing it. It's not... Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if there was some guideline we needed to be following, but it um, seems to make sense. I just want to make sure that, and that what happens also with the special permit is that you're having another opportunity for review. And I think because it's downtown, we should have as many review opportunities. Yeah, for the retail, you know, there's yeah. a lot to be looking at, traffic right. and, you know, in right. and out, whereas a cultivation facility, yeah, you've got some trucks going in, but you don't have all the people lined up in the tent and the checking people in, and it's, yeah. it's crazy if you drive by one of those, so. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think you need to have that set up out in the, you know, in the MO3 or the yeah. MO2. Do you need me to define the MO3 in that other section a little bit more for you, like on an assessor's map, Lisa? Um, yeah, you can. Um, you know, we can, you can either define it by including the parcels that are part of it, or we're just going to have to advertise the map. Yeah, and does, does there, my question for you, though, um, is when I draw a map, does it have to go on property boundaries or can it be like brook to street kind of thing? It can, it can be brook to street, but I mean, you know, think about it, right? So um, think, I mean, these are larger parcels, so I'm not worried, really worried about it. You can cut parcels in half for sure, um, but yeah. there should be some yeah. defined ones. Yep. I was just trying to figure out where to where to draw that line if it needed to be like if it had to include the whole parcel or it could be just like along the brook. So okay. let me just say from a from a practitioner's point of view. Yes, um, please. I, I like the I like parcels because it's okay. clear unless you yep. very clearly define in the zoning bylaw um, what applies. So if I have a zoning line that goes through the middle of my parcel which zoning district applies. So yeah. okay. if it's the overlay district, it's a little bit easier with overlay districts because it's clear you can only have whatever it is that you have in that section of the overlay district. Um, yep. Which then can to apply. I, mean, All that I, I, love, I love Lisa, but we do not want to have her for extra time, so I, I want parcels. I don't want. Okay, that's fine. Split. Well, the way I drew it, it, it worked out conveniently along the brook line, but because um, the other side of the brook line didn't really have any room for it, but that's fine. No, I can do that. I'll, I'll check that out, and I'll I'll get that to you. That, that way, it's cleaner. And, and that's it, fine. Yeah, yeah that's it's, okay. I mean, any time we've had discussions, it, it's better to par parcel the parcel. Parcel the parcel. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Any other you questions? Or? Uh, no, I'll make these draft back to you. Okay, that's thank wonderful. You. Wonderful. Lisa, did you have anything else you needed that you had thoughts about that might have to do with executive session? Because if you do, I think they should go into executive session and talk about it. Whatever they uh, have. For Channing Beat. Oh. If, um, if it's posted, I, I don't, it's I posted. haven't done any work on it. Okay, that's fine. We'll, I'll I'll talk, they can talk to each other. They okay, can talk we'll to each back. other. All right. Okay, thank anything you. Anything on the warrant? Anything on the town You're warrant welcome. other than that? Um, thank you, Lisa. Lisa, we had one, I had a couple of changes on the town meeting warrant when, uh, in between starting this meeting and the last time we talked. 
So I sent it out and there were recommendations for money, those money, those funding areas um, and a change in the identification, the title of the article for the SCEMS transfer. So I replied, I replied and I'm good with all of those. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Kevin, thank you for waiting. I'm sorry you had to wait. Do we know if this thing's working? Or do I have to talk about it? No, it's supposed to be functioning. Working. I think it's working. Is there a green light on? That one doesn't work. You just have to talk loud. Okay, Kevin, it doesn't work. Okay. Just got noticed. Okay. So you have to talk really loud. Um, my, with overtime, the ranges are correct. Traditional overtime. Kevin, can you explain what they're looking at for those of us that can only barely see it? <laughs> uh, what the top is, the top is, is uh, FY 17, 18, 19, and 20, what the total crew had for overtime hours. Uh, the next one down is the uh, two years of the previous uh, foreman's position, what he had for overtime. Um, and that's kind of a skewed number because he preferred not to have the overtime. Um, that's why the numbers are skewed. That's why I tried to show a total number of all the employees. And that's just a highway. And the next one down is, is if you started at grade five, step five, it starts there at 63057, and I went all the way up to a step 10, which is 77360. Um, and then stepping down from there, again, going off of what has been um, appropriated already, it's 288 hours at $28.84, which is $60,000, 280, dollars $60, Now, if that person had 230 hours of overtime at $99.50, which gives you a total of $70,168, and if they actually did the full $250, which in FY19 was the $250 plus an additional eight, because we went over. That's seventy-one thousand thirty-three dollars. So if you if you're starting at a grade five, step five, you're looking at seven sixty-three thousand. Then as the steps goes up, sixty-three, sixty-five, almost sixty-six. Step seven, sixty-eight, seven ninety-nine. Step eight, seventy-one, six six zero. Step nine, seven four, five four one. Step ten, seven seven three six zero. Um. So even if you brought somebody in at a step eight is if you're looking at a basically a five hundred dollar difference between what the maximum would be for the position that has been where do I use uh, already pre allocated for yeah we've already financial. funded it yeah we funded that level um, now just be aware again depending on where this falls into the person that does hire if this happens then that will dictate whether my um, my salary's budget will be less because right now obviously if they come in right now and if they come in anything less than a step eight my my budget's going to go down so if i bring somebody in above you're looking at a Ballpark six thousand dollar difference, and if you're looking at the difference between somebody that was a foreman, and then this position is at least three times more asking of the person to fulfill this than what the foreman position was. Granted, the foreman was here for a long time, and that's why he was he topped out at that at that step, which was a. Step three, step ten, and he was actually above step ten because of 
is longevity. Even after the reconfiguration of the uh, um, compensation plan a couple of years ago. So those are those are just some, some raw numbers. You know, I got far. She was real great. She, she, you know, she was able to get them out to me fairly quickly. Um, between class, past couple of days, and everything else that's going on with paving, I was just able to rip this out real quick and just before I walked in here. So these are real rough numbers, um, but they're accurate. And so I just used the information we given to me. What are your feelings are uh, if we advertise it as a six or seven and let them negotiate up if they? Want more, or don't you think we'll get responses? You can do that. Um, you know, the other thing is, I know that Casey, she's looking for a range because when you, because this is more of a professional position, this is not a a, a laborer's position, right. and, and I'm not trying to downgrade by by what the positions are, mm -hmm. but this is a professional position, and usually historically, when you look at ads, they give you a range of what the capabilities are. Um, but how you put it in the paper, I, I or, or put it out, that's completely up to you. Um, but again, my opinion is, is, is I would like to see, because I agree with the uh, personnel committee, I don't want to do just a quick newspaper, Franklin County, Hampshire County. We want to, um, we want to do a deed. We definitely want to step up with the NMA, mm -hmm. they will put it in, in that one. Um, and realistically, if we need to go further into, you know, I've, I've got Bay State Roads I can put it at, you know, I'd like to expand where we can go. The simple fact is, is uh, they made a perfect point, is there's tens of thousands of people that are leaving New York City. They don't want to live there anymore. Right. Here feels a really nice place to live. All of a sudden you come up with, hey, you know what, hey, this is this comfortable, I can do this job. I've done something similar to this before, or whatever. And they can come in and, and realistically, these numbers here would be good for them. I mean, it'd be less than what they're what they're used to getting paid in New York. But again, it, it's New York. You know, you're also paying 50 times more for housing there than what you do here. Look, so, um, it's all kind of relative. Look, um, but I would like to make sure that it's more of a broad. Yeah. Because, like I said last time, is I will struggle and not hire somebody. Compared to bringing somebody into the substandard, because I, I won't do it. Yeah. Because I'll spend more time. I agree, somewhere. Kevin, and you need you need support. You, you are going in so many directions. And you know, and, and, you know, one of the advantages is, is, you know, we bring somebody in now. You know, and, and am I counting my days now to a point? Uh, I'm looking at basically like five years, five to six years max, and I'd like to see somebody set up, ready to go, to, to continue on, so everything is, is seamless. You know, so that way it's that there's no questions. Um, you know, everything just moves together smoothly, which I'm I'm trying to look out for the best interest of the town. Yeah. Well, so. looking looking at comparisons, you know, from the Franklin, from the fur fur uh, compensation for 2020, um, looking at all the you know the superintendents, obviously they're not superintendent, but looking at their at their um, you know, comparisons. Of course, our town's always, every town's different. Every town we're, we're asking people to do is different. Um, but I think in the, you know, if we were if we were in the range from step three to six or something like that, we would. No. You don't think so? No. I, I, I don't think I we're going to be able to hire for that position with those responsibilities. Well, You're asking somebody to be back up in the in a similar guess, manner. Um, as I'm you're saying, asking Kevin. What I'm saying is, though, you can offer a range from three to something. It doesn't mean you have to start at step three, but what, what it does is give you that opportunity because if you look at all the other superintendent positions in Franklin County, and I know we want to go more broad and look around, um, those, are, those are in that range. Um, many of them are in, in the 60 to you know, 80 range, depending, obviously, Greenfield or Montague are going to be much higher, um, you know, maybe in the 90 range. But, um, I, you know, I don't know. I just want to make sure you leave a, a big enough opening so that you can, you can adjust. Um, well, you know, if we advertise it on a range from a, a 5 to a 9, 
you know, depending on qualifications, I think that gets you, you know, there's what a $11,000 difference there that gives you a lot of playing room. And I think that would open up people being interested, not that we're going to hire somebody unless they're absolutely stellar at 74, but it kind of puts it out there what they can attain too. Um, and just one quick one, just so you're aware on those, besides the very large ones like Montego and Greenfield, most of the other towns around us, the superintendents, they get paid overtime for plowing. I know. Okay. So, so add on another. And this guy would or wouldn't plow? Would not. Okay. Would not because it's a salary position very similar to mine. But what I'm getting at is, is the number you're looking at there do not include the superintendent's time in plowing, which could be. 100 plus hours a year, 200 hours a year. You know, so if you go ahead and take that yeah. over time, 40, 60. Casey would like to say something. I mean, so, you know, if I just look at Ashfield, Burnington, they don't Trevor? allow it, but you're up and done. Trevor. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, there is a quantification here besides what uh, Kevin just said. The breadth of work done by Kevin and the crew. It, it really is at least five disciplines, plus you're adding a layer of management. I think that by definition means that person should be higher on the range. I do think five through nine is reasonable. I'm going to ask the personnel board to approve whatever range we come up with. I'm going to ask the personnel board to approve that same range so that I don't have to go back to them before we try to hire somebody for a number. I'm going to ask them to do this first. And the reason I'm asking you all to approve a range is, first of all, it's best practice. Second of all, higher on the range, like I said before, you've got a very wide responsibility parameter that a lot of these other towns don't have. The highway superintendent in Ashfield has nothing to do with the sewer. So understand that you're asking this person to come in and do several disciplines at once in a similar manner as you're asking Kevin. So that management authority is also there. That by definition should mean you should be hiring at a higher level. But even at a step five, we're talking, you know, maybe start between seven and eight thousand dollars in overtime in other positions. So if you if if they're not eligible for overtime, it seems like and, and well funded to the higher end. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I I just want to make sure we have a really attractive. I do too. I just, I also fear that we get you know we get people in and they wind up you know in two years or at top step. Yes, so but we're going to have to confident. figure out. I mean, we've done that with with Jen. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I know. But but look what's happening in our office. We're finally getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. And, the, and it's getting done correctly for the first time in how many years? Um, you know, I mean, we're all following up on stuff, and, and that's the problem. Kevin, Kevin is not being supported. So we have to hire someone that will support Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, stuff, I mean, Kevin is going in so many different directions. And, and, we, have, and we have to increase productivity. Mm -hmm. I know people would support this. If, Kevin, I know they would support it if we could get some damn sidewalks. <laughs> this is she, she said it this time, not me. Yeah, that's why. So guess what? We'll, we'll go to town meeting and support whatever as long as we say we're going to get sidewalks. I mean, I can do sidewalks, but just remember, every every one sidewalk I do is... I know, Kevin. Payment, I'm just, don't get done. Kevin, so, Kevin, it's I know. not a big deal. I mean, more no, the technically, feasibly, tomorrow what we're planning is to try and we'll go up and down um, Sugarloaf Street and North Main Street and do the trimming. Basically, they're going to be walking through with the poles off and being able to cut because of the, the complaints of the stuff hanging in. Yeah. Um, so that's the plan for tomorrow, Good. Um, early Thank this week. Thank you. We'll Kevin. see how it plays out. Thank but again, you, you know, uh, I reached out to Taylor Davis. Um, he hasn't got back to me. Um, I got a ballpark ID on what Warner Brothers will go ahead and charge us. Um, again, I can't do anything right now because nothing's been put on capital. You know, the other side of the coin is, is, is you know, with sidewalks, mm -hmm. we, we can go ahead and we can utilize our Chapter 90 money 
But again, everything we no. everything no. we do there. We but don't. now, now because because the town did not give any money towards paving right. or sidewalks or anything. So with that being said, you know, I you know a lot of people like and I hear a lot of people going, oh well, complete streets, complete streets. Why aren't you jumping on the bandwagon? We are. You know, yeah. and and we have been. And like there was one place on the Cape, they they got just over a million dollars, but they've also been working on it for 14 years, and they've been paying a professional engineering firm to put everything together for them. I and mean, we're trying to do it ourselves. Which, with everything else that's going on, you know, um, it's very difficult. But yeah. yeah, sidewalks. I mean, sidewalks are definitely up there. You know, but uh, it's got to get it going. I mean, you know, I unfortunately I look at what I look at is is I look at a sidewalk that that 50 people walk on, and then I look at a road that 7,000 people drive on. Mm -hmm. so I know. I feel the road is more important than the sidewalk. Kevin, Tell me what you want to do with it. It took three years, almost three years of Chapter 90 money, just to remind people to be able to do Lower Road. Yeah, three years. And and, and Lower Road is was awful. It was horrible. It needed. It needed like, to be done. Long to save all that money. Is it yeah. Done? What is it done? No, it's not. It won't be, it won't be done. Done until I do the overlay. Okay. Because right now what they did was they just they just fixed the base of it. Yeah. Now. Once Warner Brothers can get in here, because we're having a little bit of a scheduling issue, yeah. but once they get in here, they're starting at Upper Road right. and going all the way to the Greenfield Line. Yep. Good. So that entire road, along with the two side roads off of it, are going to be completely done. You won't have to touch that road minimum eight to ten years. Right. And then actually when you do go, to go ahead and touch that road, Stop. all you do is you rubber and stone at a third of the cost. Right. I know a lot of people don't like the rubber and stone, but the simple fact is it's not as nice on their bare feet. It's a little bit more rougher on their bicycle. It's uh, it they can't easy it rougher wallet though. <laughs> but you know, I'm also looking at again, you know, looking at what I have for money to be able to spread it out as best I possibly can. Mm -hmm. I know. So. No, we we uh, my I would like to see us fund through capital sidewalk work. So it's not coming out of chapter ninety. It's a plan, whether it's bid out, whatever it might be, and whatever help you can offer. But we just need to get planning I out, know. appropriate the money, get it done. I know. So, you know, and we'll do a little at a time if we can afford it. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll cobble stone in the center. I guess I know what you're saying, Trevor, but I I feel like this is just as critical as it was for us to hire Jen in our office. I, I completely agree. I just want we to have make so sure much money. I mean, flexibility Kevin is one of our, smaller. yeah. And that's why I think if you advertise, give us the latitude to advertise between the five and the nine. Right. Um, so if you, I'd if like, you feel better go with four to nine or three to nine. You, know, you can give it a larger range. You can go to the lower end. Yeah, eleven thousand dollar range is a pretty good size range. You know? um, so. I, I'm comfortable saying five to nine because we, we want someone that's really qualified. And has some experience, mm -hmm. so you're not going to. It's a waste of time to go too low. Mm -hmm. So um, I make a motion to um, offer the salary range from step five, which is grade five, step five, to um, step nine, and it's only slightly much more than a little bit more than what's already in the budget, or has been in the budget. So I, I feel it's still conservative. As much as, but we need to have this person, and so we we just, you know, it's worth taking the risk. We don't want to lose somebody good or not have someone apply because they're, you know, they could make the difference for us mm -hmm. the first year or two. And if Kevin has that kind of support, then you know, grant wise, we can generate some grants, and that will offset. I mean, I mean, we just. Like you said, complete streets, all this stuff has been in the works for a long time, yeah. and it's just like we need to keep pushing. Yep. Yeah. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, is there any more discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Hey, Wolf, am I? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Trevor Nuff, aye. Kevin, thank you for putting together the salary because yeah, I helpful. think we were just all very concerned. Oh, sure. I, I that, completely that, understand that um, with our the situation, um, COVID situation, we don't really know what's happening. 
and we just want to make sure that we've already been budgeting, but I think we're going to be okay. I think, I think we should be okay. Yeah. And Casey, you'll bring that to the uh, personnel board? I think you're muted. Please. Yes, I will. <laughs> I was muted. I Thank talked you. to myself. Thank you. Yeah, um, we noticed. Kevin, <laughs> the only other question I had while you're here is, um, and I, I just want to say thank you so much. And I'm sorry that I was, you know, harassing you. But I was really stressed about the weather. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's all part of the job. I know, but thank you because you were very nice, even yeah, though I called you, you so a early. Um, but uh, I just couldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, the one thing I wanted to know, how are we doing on um, the culvert, Kelleher culvert? I'm, I'm really getting concerned that we're... Supposedly, I talked, I talked with Zach um, from the engineering firm actually yesterday, and he said that he was calling again to Emmy Smith to find out what is going on. Um, I do know that they asked for a extension, and he didn't even bother coming to us and asking. He just flat out told him, no. Everything that you've got, you can do in your time frame. So get to it. I know they were waiting on the, on the you know, you have to The structure out. itself is still what they're waiting on. Oh, God. What's All right. I'm the, sorry, I missed that. The structure is the being, concrete. Oh. concrete structure is being poured. The color. Okay. They, they are individually poured for the the length yeah. and the, and they fit they do the measurement just just mm -hmm. like you would the clarify sure. sure. not custom. obviously no. but it, custom. yeah it's all custom done and you know we had that problem on Mill Mill, Mill Village both uh, both culverts you had you know were hanging around waiting for the but I'm but what I'm concerned you about is, that one I think I yeah think, right yeah but what were what I'm concerned about is you you get into the bad weather mm -hmm. and we, we want to make yesterday and we get you know, too much rain, or you know, you get freezing rain. We want everything done before then. Well, my understanding is that I thought they had to be done, and I, and I could be wrong because I'm so many numbers are in my head. But I thought they had it was only like like November 12th or something like yes, that. Yes, there is. There is. The maximum. Yes. Time allowed. So the the cement company is behind. Getting yes. it done? And yes, it's a it's a foundry. Is it coming out of Adams or where? I honestly do not know who, who they're bringing it through. I, I I hate to ask one more thing, but would you just do one more phone call? To yeah, sure, no, no problem. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm, I'm just getting concerned I'm... about. I know it's not going to take that long once they get started. Yeah. But it just if we could just stay on top of it, I sure. it's really worth harassing them. I think. Sure, no, no problem. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Right. Is there anything you wanted, anybody who needed to ask Kevin before he leaves? Okay. Kevin, thank you. All right. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. And again, thank you very much for being so understanding this morning. Sure. You um, I appreciate you dropping off sandbags and all kinds of stuff because of the weather. Just trying to make sure that everything was done right. Yes, but it was wonderful. Thank you. So it seemed to work out okay. And I yeah. think, it, it, which inadvertently in a way is good because they need you a good dry run for Sunday. Right. Yeah. So now Sunday is even smoother than today was. And do you need yeah. any help over there getting ready for the fourth? Um, getting everybody cleaned out or? No, I shouldn't. Um, the my plan is, is is on Friday. I pretty much plan on having the place out. Yep. And that way I don't have to incur any overtime or anything for people coming in. They have yep. to the place out on Sunday. Um, again, my plan is, is I'm going to sterilize or, or spray the entire building. Okay. That way anybody coming and going doesn't have anything to do with us. Right. And then once Sunday is done and everybody clears out, then my plan is I go, I'm going to go through and sanitize the entire building all over again. So that way there'll be nothing for anybody coming through that can affect our highway. Right. Kevin, so. thank you. Uh, we'll have everything over at the church for you to bring over on Friday. Yep. And um, Caitlin Rock from Sunderland, uh, the Board of Health in Sunderland, myself, and Vic, my daughter Victoria, we were, we were going to do the setup on Saturday. I just don't have a. Uh, I know uh, Victoria has had Cece's um, soccer practice in the morning. I don't know what Caitlin's kids' practice is, but is there any opportunity for us to get into the highway garage sometime in the afternoon? Okay. Or yeah. Saturday yeah. afternoon? Okay. Sure. I, I'll, as soon as I get Caitlin's schedule, I'll let you know because we were just going to go in and set up. I'm only 1,500 feet away, so. Okay. 
right. Could almost no, we walk. Just, we just yeah. didn't want to. It, it, will be a, it will be a nicer start on Sunday if we're all set up. Yeah, exactly. everything's all set up. Yeah, because everything's going to be inside. You don't have to worry about anything. Just open the doors and go. Yeah. yeah no, no problem. Okay. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's so, so really great. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. How's the book? Thanks for the support. Yep. Oh, thank you. Um, Casey, is there anything you want to update us on? Um, okay, so we're working on making some adjustments with a hearing that we had a problem with. Um, I mm -hmm. don't know, honestly, like I said before, whether we'll get quorum for planning board tomorrow. Um, I certainly mm -hmm. won't cancel the meeting. I just, I wanted you to know that we hadn't gotten quorum and it was difficult to get feedback from them. I. I don't know where they they feel there could be a connection point in terms of the marijuana marijuana bylaw. Although I did send Lisa's revision that Trevor had marked up to Chris Curtis. So from that perspective, um, I can't say much to it. Right okay. now, the office is um, extremely busy. Okay. What did you have? Um, a, did you have a question specifically, Carolyn? No, I just wanted, what I wanted to do is go into executive session and not come back in, out. In so maybe session. we should talk through the special town meeting warrant before you go into executive session. Yeah, I just, uh, is there any public comment? Is anyone on for public comment? Casey, can you tell? Um, I see somebody, but I don't see. Um, Nobody's clicking, okay. I see a telephone number, I don't see a name. Okay. So, let's so maybe if we talk through some of the yeah, changes to the special town meeting warrant, then you guys could ask public co ask oh, for oh, public somebody, comment again. Somebody, uh, somebody did want to do public comment. I think Chris is on. Is Chris? Is that you, Chris Curtis? No, Chris uh, Harris. Harris. Oh, Chris Harris. Yeah, and I and I have no comment. Uh, very good. Meeting. Okay. Oh, How are you? Oh, Chris. Yes, thanks for joining. Um, I thought that might be you, Chris. Meeting. Okay. I always know it's the three three one zero number. Oh, okay. I can't. How? Where are you seeing that? Up in the upper right. Oh, okay. Gosh, I don't have my glasses on. I guess. Yeah. Now this big TV okay. is making it hard. <laughs> oh yeah. God, I know. All right. Yeah, but you can so see okay. it. <laughs> well, I thought the the telephone was going on and off, so um, but I couldn't tell the number. Okay. Um, special town meeting warrant, Casey, let's walk through what, if there's any questions on that. Okay. So please understand I have not sent this out to all the financial people yet because I wanted to clarify the articles, um, the language and specifically about the community preservation. I did thankfully have some back and forth emails with Brenda and if I need to call her, she's told me I can do that. I think I found the information we needed um, for that particular article. Um, and essentially we're, the language is dictated by the park grant folks. This is why we have to revote it. So I'll start at the okay. top. One thing that we forgot to do was the, if at the June town meeting was acceptance of grants. So I added that article and I conferred with Lisa that it's a good idea to have it in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, article Absolutely. two is a consent article for financial votes. Now, I didn't know if there were any capital projects that anybody wanted to talk about. I put an yeah. a language in there, but we have not spoken to CIPC. Um, so Brenda's suggestion was to put in uh, the question about, so, so keep in mind, Trevor, the, we need to preserve as much money as we can for annual town meeting next year to fund mm -hmm. FY22, because we are going, right. I know revenues are going to be down. And so does, so does Brenda. And we're all aware because of the financial situation in mm -hmm. the country. State revenues, so right. I would be very cautious about voting something. And that's my only comment. However, Brenda reminded me that when possible, and this is background that I haven't had, the town has added money to stabilization. 
Um, that's up. These things are up to you guys, and I'm sure we'll get commentary from finance and capital. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. They'll probably to want us to put any put stuff stabilization. In, sta in stabilization. Yeah. The issue is, is we may have to use stabilization in 22 and 23. So right. it's it's a question for them to comment on and for you guys to decide how you yeah, want to have how you want to deal with it. Yeah, but not enough. Yeah, but we might need you know, this, the only concern I have, I just want to make sure the dollar amount is going to be high enough. We can always go down. I don't know what that dollar amount would be. That's why I put a sum of no, money. What I'm, what I'm saying, Casey, is I just want to make sure it's high enough because we can't go higher at town meeting, but we can lower it. Correct. And so we could talk that through with ca with finance and capital. I don't know what yep. they had for an idea. And Brenda isn't here, so keep in mind she's on vacation and she's been very, um, we're not very helpful to respond to me. Yep. I think yep. her input would be very useful, but I also think we'll see it at a finance committee meeting and, and capital yep. if they decide to hold, which I'm hoping they'll they'll hold. Um, I did put the Deerfield 350th funds in there because you all had asked me. And yeah, I, is it $10,000, Carolyn? Yeah. yeah, it's just 10000 So do you want me um, to change this to say 10000 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just added in 10000 um, Casey, we do want to put some, uh, oh, I mean, I was concerned about trying to, if we had issues with funding the school, but um, Trevor reminded me that um, because of COVID, we have level funding of the schools, which we were supposed to get a cut this year. So that's about 300,000. So I'm, I'm actually okay now thinking about it in retrospect. And if we're gonna be short, we, we can go to stabilization. I just was worried because the schools are, you know, are having more expenses and not everything is covered. Right. But we also didn't experience a cut that we were gonna get. But we don't know what the final budget's going to be. The House and the Senate and the Governor have not determined the final budget. So that's no, my other caveat. Yeah, but everybody's hurting. So they, I'm sure they're going to level. They, 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 the Governor is going to try to level fund as much as possible. So mm -hmm. if, everybody, if, if we get cut, everybody's getting cut. So right, but if we get we, cut, we'll pro we may have to come up with additional funds. That's my only cautionary comment. We, we can pull it out. Yeah, but the formula, the, the new formula hasn't kicked in, which is going to penalize us about $300,000. So that money is still coming to us under, this, under the mm -hmm. COVID stuff. And if everybody gets cut, everybody's getting cut. But we're not specifically losing money yet. I just didn't want to leave, you yeah. know, a million dollars in free cash for the year. Yeah. We could put it into stabilization I'm, I'm and fine then pull with from it, it so, at annual well, town meeting right. if we need it. Yeah. So can okay. I make a comment about putting money in stabilization? Um, mm. The thing about stabilization, and Lisa actually clarified this for me because she said, are you putting money in stabilization or taking it out? And I said, we're putting, the intent would be to put money in stabilization. Keep in mind, and when you're pulling money out of stabilization, there's a different majority, quantum majority required. And generally, it's harder to pull money out than it is to put money in. That's, That's the whole idea. just a comment. So the more money you're putting into stabilization, the less free cash. Free cash is easier to vote. Just saying. That's okay. Yeah, okay. but the town has a history of if you're going to increase the tax rate, they're going to let you take as much out of the stabilization yeah. as you want. Yeah, and we and we do want a stable tax rate, so I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I was just worried about the schools, and I had forgotten about the formula not kicking in this year mm -hmm. yet. So I'm okay. So if you notice, there's the legal expenses. I need you guys to think about the next one, which is legal expenses, because okay. I need your. Can I just ask? Do we have a free cash number? Is, is Brenda here? Or she, she, no, we free, got it a couple weeks ago. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Okay. But one if you give me a minute or two, I can look it up. Oh, that's okay. No, I just no, it's one point three something. Okay, we got a ballpark. Free cash. I think it's we, one point three. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It's 1.3 something. Uh, it is 1.374762. Yep. 
Um, so keep in mind, we need to we need to have some on hand for we have been balancing year. our budget for years. I right. Know. And we it's, always have. One thing about budgeting, the recommendation, this is a best practice recommendation. Town, different towns do it differently. But one suggestion for our use of stabilization is for um, for for to fund things that have a long term Lie, that are yeah. a long-term asset, you know, long-term right. projects, assets of the town, that sort of thing. Not necessarily general expenses. Um, free cash, they love it if you don't use free cash to balance your budget, but guess what? A lot of towns do it. It's, that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, if we have a certain amount in free cash, it's easier for us to fund any, or balance our omnibus budget and maybe use stabilization for some of Listen, the projects that are asset related. I, I've been a selectman for too long. I, I want conservative formulas on mm -hmm. our revenue. And the right. reason why we generate free cash to cover our, and which we use for our operational budget mm -hmm. is because we do our conservative on our revenue forecast. Yep. And we do a five year rolling average. And the whole point is to keep our tax rate stable mm -hmm. and to be as fiscally as responsible. And I'm, I'm not changing our formulas. I'm, I would right. be totally against changing our formulas just because you're not supposed to fund your operational budget out of free cash. Well, too bad. Mm -hmm. We have done it since I have been selecting as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. I'm just okay. making a point. I know, I know. But I get harped on by other people that say we generate too much free cash, we should, you know, change our formulas, and I don't want to because the reason we've been, been they have been working out, mm -hmm. and we have been extremely stable, and we are, and, and I feel like being conservative is the correct thing to do, yep. especially now. I mean, I don't want, I mean, you just don't change formulas in the middle of a crisis. So... I, I'm, I'm sorry to be like harping on this, but no. I, I get really nervous all the time when people talk about this every year, and I just so I'm putting it out front. No changing the formula. So, so I just think that you know, looking at what we have for free cash, I think it's important to put some in stabilization, yeah, and no, I'm okay. not really, you know, some can go in capital, some can go in general. The whole idea for me is putting it in general stabilization because when we do hit that brick wall, which we may in the next couple of years, because of all this. We can pull from that to cover ourselves mm -hmm. to get through a bad year or two, um, but we don't have to pull a huge amount because you're you're being conservative and you still have less money in free cash. I also want to think about you know maintenance of some of our buildings. I'm right. anxious to read the maintenance building. You know, I look at this building here. This these windows need to be painted. The, the wall in that addition that was put on one time is rotting off. That C-111 is curling up. You could stick your finger right through the wall. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's areas that need to get, you know, we need to hire a contractor to come and just pull that off and redo it. I mean, there's things that we need to not rely on seven guys to do. We need to go, okay, let's put 10000 aside. We've got money in our general building maintenance fund, let's just go do that work. We know it's bad. We keep looking the other way. Get it done. There's some, you know, we got to have to do paving out here soon. I mean, there's there's just general maintenance stuff that we need to get on before it starts rotten. So, I mean, this is the time to kind of throw some money aside and do that work. So All how right. do you want to handle that? Do you want two, I need to know, do you want a stabilization article for general stabilization and for capital or just general um well i was curious what the um i mean i'll be curious to hear what the you know what the capital team wanted with the finance committee i mean usually would like a conversation with them to say to talk about where you know we're always trying to put a little bit money in capital stabilization because we've got you know, Kevin's, you know, big trucks that are going to be due in the next year or so. He has a plan, a 25-year plan. Um, we're not fully funded to be able to support that right now, but if we, I think he's always looking for 100 and something a year. If, if in a perfect world, we had plenty of money every year. I think, I forget what the number was, Kevin, maybe 180 a year would go into capital stabilization, and that would cover your plan for, for 25 years or something like that. Um, 
I think it was 120 or something. No, it was, it was 100, 115,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so if you took $115,000 a year and put it in, that would that would that give you level funding for every piece of equipment that the highway department is going to purchase. That so goes from pickup trucks to loaders, the backhoes, the right. trucks to all the work. Everything. So that's why I kind of feel like we need to put a little in capital and a little in stabilization. And maybe it winds up only to a hundred each or something like that, or hundred and fifty right. or something. But um, Okay. So what I will do article for both. I will do an article for both. Um, so that means I will add transfer, so I'll retitle it transfer to general stabilization and transfer to capital stabilization. And right. I'll just say a sum of money. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so legal expenses. This is something I need you all to, so let me make one, one um, comment here. We need to mm -hmm. finalize this warrant relatively quickly. Like this has to be signed and posted by the 6th which is next week. Okay. Um, that's why I wanted to have a substantially complete warrant to send to the finance committee so they, and the capital improvement planning committee so they can yell at me, um, which mm -hmm. is fine, they can yell at me. But the legal expenses, so as you know, we now have a collective, we were, in, we were notified June 3rd that we have a collective mm -hmm. bargaining unit that's organizing. Yep. This mm -hmm. is going to incur more costs than we anticipated. Um, we also seem to be incurring a lot more costs for other land use projects and it yeah. appears, and this is just my comment as a town administrator, it appears that there have been some instances in the past where uh, some personnel matters haven't been dealt with mm -hmm. effectively and usually you use town council for that. So I wrote an yeah. article asking to transfer money to legal. Um, and are you, are you thinking about 25,000? I'm thinking about 20. I was thinking about 20. Okay. If you, you we can uh, always, so if you want me to put 25 in there, you can always reduce it. You just can't increase it. Yeah, let's put 25 in. Because then that way we're not asking the finance committee for transfer, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And we can just use it from free cash. Yeah. Okay. So um, I will put in 25,000. We'll Thank you. And then we um, could discuss, you know, what that annual sheet is, I guess, through the winter when we get the budget. Okay. Yes. I think Brenda, having gone, Brenda gets some information because she and I are doing the bills. Now, there's some things that I can't go back and parse out because of how the bills were processed before I got here. But she and I have a better idea of what we're spending. And it was one thing the two of us suggested, thought we should do. Um, particularly since the finance committee had an issue last time we um, last time we had a transfer in July, they had a, an issue with the amount that we requested for transfers. Now those were unforeseen expenses that we didn't have any control over. But because I see that budget really getting hit, I have the the control now to say, hey, let's ask for the transfer now, because that way we are properly notifying the townspeople that there are issues we need to deal with. Yep. Um, the revisions to the classification plan. Um, thankfully, Brenda reads her email. Um, initially, this article only had the public works assistant, well, the highway assistant superintendent. Um, I've added two positions that, one of which we had completely forgotten about, and that was the administrative assistant to the highway slash public works department, um, which was approved, but not, we didn't actually add the thing, add that position to the classification plan, we forgot. Right. So yep. that one I've added, and I had the approved grade, and grade for that. So that, through personnel board. The only one that I had trouble mm -hmm. with was the building commissioner. So I've sent an email out to Roloon to talk to me about it. So. Now that we have a salary range that I can ask personnel board about, I'll also ask them to just quantify a vote that I think happened, but I can't find minutes on. It happened, yeah, it happened before their time. But they so could, I, I would just like them to re-vote it for form Yeah, sake. I think they did that already, but yeah, I think it's been voted twice now. I, but, um, I think so, but I can't find minutes. And that entire right. committee is gone. Yep, let's just have them do another then. So, yeah. All right. 
So that I think is in a stable orbit. I sent the language back to Brenda. Um, and basically it's a revision to the classification plan. All right. Mm -hmm. The next thing we had is Skem's money. Skem's money. So Brenda suggested I make a change to the title, which I did. It now says transfer okay. of Skem's rental income to Skem's stabilization fund from previous years. So it's yeah. FY19 and 20. And Brenda's okay. recollection of this is that the finance committee and the select board were aware that we had received the money, but we hadn't created a fund to put it in. So in June, right. we created a fund and we put yep. the FY21 money in there. Yep. I was asked to FY21, not the other two years, but FY21. Yeah, we, we couldn't do the other twos until, until the fund was up and then we were gonna wait to see what free cash was and then move that um, when we had more time to discuss at the next town meeting, okay. slide it over. So. And so here's where we're looking at. You're looking, so if you do um, $72,000 worth of income, so 36,000 for two fiscal years, 75% of that is $54,000. So I put $54,000 in there. And it's That's right. uh, reflecting the 75% of the rental income received for the fiscal years 2019 and 2020. Yep. Okay. Good. And that was, again, right. thanks to Brenda's, Brenda's assistance while she's on vacation. <laughs> um, the next oh, thing that's on there is the acceptance of Merrigan Way, which as you know, we have to get done if yep. we have a hope of getting Oxford on up for sale. Yeah. Yep. So um, that has Katie, to get put on. I'm sorry to interrupt uh, because I just I keep forgetting. Could you make sure that we send uh, a certificate of insurance to pilot decision so we can use um, their parking spaces for volunteer parking on Sunday, October 4th. Oh. I, I need an indemnification certificate. That way you don't even have to deal with them. Oh, no, no, no. I want, we want to park, we want our volunteers to park in their parking place. Oh, okay. Oh, not in the other area? No. Yeah, but. Okay, might, well, yeah, I, I think it, this way everybody's on pavement and um, it's I'll all neat tight, it's all lined up. Um, but we need a certificate of insurance to send over to them. And they were wonderful to let us use it for volunteer parking. Okay. Thank you, Casey. I'm, I'm um, sorry to bring it. Up train of thought, no, I just said Merrigan Way and it, it clicked in your brain. Yeah. So I had. Uh, Lisa go through that language and we referenced the plans and we referenced the date. Um, so she's already approved that article and planning board did approve. They reviewed it and approved it on the 14th of yes. September. Yep. Um, the next okay. article is, so this is the authorization for funds for construction facilities of the, um, for the North main street land. And the language of this is by and large dictated by the park grant folks. They, so we have a bit of a difference of opinion in one portion of this, and that's the reference to general laws, chapter 45 section. It says 14 right now. That is town council's suggestion. And if you read in the comments, she tells you, it provides more flexibility um, but it's up to the town. The parks grant folks would like you to choose section three. Um, What's the difference? More restrictive. It's more restrictive. Um, it means really, the way I understand it, section three precludes any development to the land. Right. Um, I, I just. I, I, yeah, I tend you know, to want to go with town council, but I wonder. Yeah. Dead. And if you looked at John's email, he sent an email earlier. I wonder if we take the vote this way, does it completely preclude the their approving a grant? I didn't get that flavor from his email, but that may be something that it would be worthwhile before we finalize that article to ask John right. and then we'll authorize me to make that change. Now, like I said, three is more restrictive I than know. 14. I, I would like 14, but um, if we have to go with three to get the parks money, then let's think about it some more. So, 
Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Hold on. No. I don't want to tie up all that stuff in a town meeting vote for no I money. I know. I, I, I tend to agree with you. I'm, oh, I yeah. Know. I, I tend all to right, agree with you. I'm say, sorry. Right, that's what I listen to town council. That's that's who I listen to. Yep. I agree. I know. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. Um, okay. So the next one is the zoning bylaw amendment for the floodplain district, which the planning board has approved. Um, I was there when they approved. I think they approved that on the 14th as well. So I took the language that Chris Curtis sent me, and this is what's been inserted. Councils reviewed this it. Up, this is just pretty much updating um, the floodplain zoning. It's, it it's does, and it's done. more, much more comprehensive, Carolyn. Much more comprehensive. Okay. So right. they, they added a lot of definitions, a lot of, um, a lot of body to this. So, and they okay. went through several months of deli deliberation from what I understand. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I did include that it was recommended by the planning board. And so the last yeah. article is the marijuana article. And I'll be honest, I don't think we have time to get it done because we would have to create well, the theory. And so if, if planning board is not willing to, to, if they're only willing to go with their own language. They're not. Not. Well, I don't know no. that. And so we're trying to get them to meet with us because we have publication limits. So if they meet with you tomorrow, um, yeah. we don't have a lot of time to properly notice for a hearing. Plus, they would have to decide whether they were going to have a hearing on a certain date. The dates, they didn't want to have a hearing about this the day of town meeting. Um, they right. might be willing to do it a few days before. But... Right. The earliest, if we publish on Monday, the earliest they could have it is the 20th. Right. So you're yeah. looking at the 20th or the 21st, and they have to be amenable to it, particularly since That's we had an hoping. issue with the remand that we had to make a change to and John wasn't happy about because I had to make a command decision. Well, it's fine. We're going to work. We're just going forward with those dates right now. So hopefully <laughs> tomorrow we have discussion amongst enough people to have um, a substantive conversation. That was right. the reason I asked you if they if we don't have quorum of the planning board tomorrow, do you want to see if you can meet with them on the fifth? But I think that knocks our, our entire because I had given you a a basic yeah, idea of what our publication had to be. I yeah. I think by Monday we're too late. And keep in mind, okay. the warrant has to be signed by Tuesday. So mm -hmm. I will write. Casey, yeah. You're going to do the best we can, okay? Just, I know. We're just going to try. I'm just giving you the idea, the, basically the synopsis of where we are in the office and yeah. what we've got for deadlines. I know it's tight, but we'll drive to people's houses and bang on their doors and see if they can come. <laughs> um, we I mean, have made those phone calls. We have sent emails. We haven't gotten a lot yeah. of response. I don't know if it's because they aren't happy with us in the office. I don't know what that, what it is. It could be just everybody's busy. I know we are. Um, I think most of it's busy. So don't, don't is it a possibility for a Zoom? Or is it already? We have to plan it, it as a Zoom. Yeah. I mean, Zoom we, have to, we have to notice for Zoom now because technically uh, we would... Yeah, no, we would, we would we would exceed our our occupancy in the office. Yeah. Okay. So we can just if somebody doesn't have a computer, we could maybe get a computer to them, or yeah. we could. But we would have to go out and set it, make sure they had all the setup for their Wi-Fi and stuff. Um, some yeah. people call in, and I can send out the draft. That the other thing is, is if Lisa's going to revise that draft, if we can get it by tomorrow, that's great. If we can't, um, Monday makes sense. But I would have to go back and see if that fits into the timeline. I actually haven't had a chance to revise that timeline today. To okay. Today. Okay. All so right. we'll that's essentially that. the warrant. Okay. I do okay. have one question. Um, Only one? No, I just, <laughs> it, it, I have lots of questions. You know that. No. Is there anything no, else that you can think of? that we should make changes or add? 
So We're really tight there, with the warrant right now. Is there any discussion? Does the uh, park project need to be on the warrant? Yes. And the American Way one? and the parks project are critical. Oh, is the park project on this? That was that was that's what we the were North Main about. Street language. Okay, so the other. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing about that. I did talk to uh, Brenda, and she gave me the references for the additional million dollars that's being requested. Because after John got more in-depth information from the engineering firm, um, we need more money. So that's a, that also reflects an increase to the budget. And there's only two sources we could take it from. One is the budgeted reserve, which was $153,516. And the other is the undesignated fund balance. And the balance, if we have a million dollar request, which is what John submitted, um, if we have an additional million dollar request, the difference is $846,484 out of undesignated fund balance. We do have about two million in there. Um, it's just we had to figure out whether we could find the money in the first place. I know, but I'm, I'm, we've been. Just like Kevin, it took three years of Chapter 90 money to do lower road. We are still, our priority is senior housing and senior center. And we need to keep as much money as we can. That's and all I'm saying. You need to talk to John because that, those are the yeah. only two places no, no, to no, take no, it. No, 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 I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about we just, we have to make sure we're keeping that in the back of our minds. Okay. And I did send an I'm, email out to him to that effect. <laughs> Because yeah, you I and I had had a conversation about that not too long ago. I know. I, I just want people to know that we're, it sounds like we've got a lot of money, but when you're doing a senior center and you're doing senior housing, it's not that much. Okay. You're right. Uh, I, I just, I'm concerned. I want to make sure you grow, uh, ladies get home tonight. So um, let's go. If that's it. Um, then, so is um, this acceptable to the board with, mon may with a minor um, language addition of the capital stabilization article um, yep. in the subset of the consent article? I would add that. Yep. And if mm -hmm. I have to make monetary changes to any of the articles, will you authorize me to make those without having to call a meeting to review it? Yes. Okay, my last question is, is if I have to call a meeting, if there's something that substantially changes, um, we might have to call a meeting uh, by, by Tuesday at the latest, okay. but during the day, which yeah, might not be I've possible. Got, I've, got, I've got school committee Tuesday night, but you guys are, I don't know if you're both available, but other than that, I'm around. Yeah, so. I, I have because a, keep in mind, we have to get this posted by four o'clock <laughs> in order to hit the 14 days. So my suggestion yeah. is, is if this warrant um, with the addition of the capital and any minor changes to the funding to, po to publish as the warrant, if the board is OK with this and if we have to remove marijuana, um, is the board OK with me making those changes and sending it out? to you for you to sign at your at your um, discretion or do you want me to just plan for a meeting on Monday? If marijuana is not on the on the warrant, I don't see a reason to have the meeting. I want to hold off on the meeting. I want to change the meeting if marijuana is not on there. That's why we're going into executive session. So um, anyway Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like it is and I'll let you know if I have to if I need you guys to meet. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, we're available if you need it. Yeah, we'll make a decision. All right, so I'll write um, the language and I'll have somebody check my numbers. Okay. Okay? Um, and I think I gave yeah. you an executive session vote if you're ready to go in. Yeah. 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 The chair declares a quorum of members is in attendance at this meeting, and an open meeting would be detrimental to the negotiating position of public body for the following actions. Remember, the select board moves pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A6. The select board will enter into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares an open meeting may be detrimental effect 
in the negotiating position of the public body and resume open session at the end of the executive session. Second. Governor McDaniel. I oh, know you're going to make that motion. So we made the second. Oh, you want me to make the motion? Yeah. Oh. You, you declare so, the motion. So get, you get to read I, it, Trevor. Oh, no, I no, just read it. Yeah, just okay. read it. So. Then so I will I'll make the motion. the motion. Okay. And he already seconded it. Seconded. Right. So is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Um, although we would invite uh, Casey Warren in. Yeah. Uh, town, town Administrator. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, I David Wolfram. And I, Carolyn Ness.